Hello everyone, today is part of the December super special bonus series or whatever. We're going to be covering how to connect to a Rails Action Cable WebSocket server from a vanilla JS application. Now you don't necessarily need to use a vanilla JS application uh, to connect to it. It's just a good way to illustrate with a fairly bare bones solution how you can communicate with this WebSocket server. And then you'll be able to in real time communicate between them. Like I can click hello on the Rails server. It'll say hello here, but it'll also say hello on the the application over here. So if I mash it a bunch of times, you'll see that over here we have six as well. So it, it's really powerful in the sense that like maybe instead of a, a JS app, you have, I don't know, a Minecraft server, you're talking to your computer craft computer on there. Uh, you have like an Unreal Engine game and you wanna have real-time communications. Uh, you wanna send like notifications to your users and your users are on like a front end uh, React app instead of just on your Rails app, stuff like that. So it's actually not that hard to set up uh, as soon as you know what to do. Um, but if you don't know what to do, it's an absolute nightmare. So hopefully we can get through this very quickly so we can all move on with our lives. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this Rails app. I'm gonna CD out of it, and then I'm gonna do a Rails, let me actually bump up the font size a bunch. Let's do a Rails new video, and we're not gonna pass in anything else this time because we don't need like Bootstrap or ES Build. So all we're really gonna do is generate a controller, generate a action cable channel, and then set up a little bit on the Rails side, but most of what we're gonna be doing is gonna happen on the uh, Vite side of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and CD into our video. We'll do a Rails G controller pages home. No, nothing new there. And then we'll do a Rails G channel. We'll call it, I think I called it like alerts in the demo. Uh, and we can just hit enter on that. It doesn't matter what you call it. You just have to change what the string is whenever you use it. Okay, so that works. Now let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S and I'll go ahead and exit out of here. Uh, oops, actually let's do a code dot to open this up in VS Code so we can actually work with our code base. That sounds like a smart idea. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and then I'll do a Rails S. We can refresh our localhost port 3000 page. That should take us to the default Rails page. Let's come into our config and our rats.rb. And then in here, let me bump up the font size a bit. And then I'll hit uh, control B to hide the side panel. Let's change this get to a root. We'll change the slash to a hash to give us a home page. I'll go ahead and refresh the Rails app. That'll work. And then the other thing we need to do in here uh, is we have this hello button that I made. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quick because there's really nothing new about it. We're gonna say post to slash hello. And we'll set this to go to the pages, oops, the pages controller and the uh, hello action, just so we have something to post to. So we'll come over to our explorer, our app, our controllers and our pages controller. And then inside of our pages controller, we can do our def hello action, oops, hello, end. And then in here, we'll just do whatever we need to to make this broadcast the hello message. For now, we'll leave it blank. We'll come into our views, our pages and our homepage. And then in our home page, all we really want to do is, oops, uh, do this. We just want to make a button to say hello, which takes us to the hello path. So this is just very basic rail stuff, right? We click this button and nothing's going to happen because we're not doing anything yet. But what about the magical, mystical action cable stuff we just set up? Well, the first thing that we can check is in our app, we have a channels folder and inside of the channels folder, we have an alerts channel. Inside of this alerts channel, we can do some stuff if we want to, like a pretty common thing to do is create, I think like a speak method. Uh, they also have a receive method. And I do have a uh, turbo chat series on the channel that does some of the action cable stuff and uses turbo and rail seven. I'd highly recommend checking that out if you're interested. Uh, but in this case, we actually don't need this for our basic functionality. Basically, all we really have to do here is inside of our uh, subscribed method right here, we just say we want to stream from an alerts channel. Now we can come into our app and our JavaScript and our channels folder. And then in here, we'll have an alerts channel. And inside of this alerts channel, we can just check and make sure we're actually connected to this channel when we start up a Rails app. So we'll say console.log. Hello from Rails. Save that, we'll hit F11. We'll come over here and we'll refresh. We can see hello from Rails is in our console. So we know that we're at least console logging from the alerts channel, which means we're probably connected. So now that I'm done coughing my brains out, we can go ahead and create this little V application if we want to. Uh, and the basic way we're gonna do this is we can stop the server. 
and I don't remember the command for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the up arrow key a couple times until I find it uh, because we do need to actually create this and I'm way too lazy to, uh, I guess I can't find it, that's fine. Let's just go ahead and do a V documentation. It was worth a shot. Come over to V, go to get started. And then in here, we should hopefully see the, there it is, NPM create. NPM create V at latest. We can go ahead and run that. It'll ask us for a project name. I'll just call it client. We'll go with vanilla JS, JavaScript. And now we can CD into our V app if we want, oops, into our client app if we want to. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna move over to the other application that was in our demo folder so that I can have two windows open. So I'm gonna CD out of here and I'll go ahead and uh, I'll, I guess what we can do first, let me make sure I do this. Uh, let's do a bundle add for the rack dash cores gem, I think it's called. Cause I did see it in the up arrow menu there a couple times. Uh, and then we can go ahead and do a rails S. So the reason why we're doing the uh, rack cores stuff is because when we do these requests, we are gonna have to deal with our middleware. So let's come into our app, our config, our initializers, right click new file, cores.rb. And then in here, I'm gonna paste in some code. It's pretty standard boilerplate stuff. It's just rails.application.config.middleware.insert before zero comma rack colon colon cores, you get the idea. This right here is where you would normally say something like only allow requests from localhost port 3001 so that only a, a website from port 3001 can access you. Uh, then you can tell it what resources, what header, headers and what methods you can use. Uh, we're just modifying this a bit so that we're kind of opening it up to the world and then you can always restrict it later. But for the sake of this tutorial, this is, this is plenty good. Uh, this will allow us to uh, sort of allow list everything from our uh, Vite app. So because we're adding this as an initializer, we do need to stop the server and start it again just to make sure everything's working. And then we can come over to another tab and in here I'll just CD out of the demo and then CD into our video slash client. And then in here we can just run a NPM install. Let me hit F11 and I'll just go ahead and control plus this a bunch. So we're installing here, otherwise nothing's gonna work. And then we can go ahead and run a NPM run dev and that'll start our Vite server on this random port here. So let's just go ahead and grab this and then we can come over here and we can paste it in. That'll take us to our homepage in our Vite app with the counter, which we don't really care about. So let's come over here, let's go into our client and into our main.js, which is the file that has the counter and let's just get rid of everything, save that. We can then refresh the page and it's all gone, cool. Now we can actually do the socket stuff. So this is from the client application. So we'll just say function create socket. And the first thing to note is action cable has a web socket mounted at, and it's gonna be ws colon slash slash localhost port 3000 slash cable. What that means is when we create our socket here, which is gonna be const socket equals new web socket, this is gonna to have to come from this URL. So you can even take this, store it inside of a const socket URL is equal to this. And we can throw the const socket URL into our web socket. Next thing we can do is we can create a function that says when the socket is open, send data to the server or receive data. So we'll say socket.onopen is equal to a new function. And then we can come down here and close it. And then inside of this, the first thing that I like to do is just console log out that we're connected to the server. Next thing we wanna do is construct a message that we send to the Rails server, which we'll call MSG. And in here, we need to pass in a command, which will be the word subscribe, not to the YouTube channel, you don't need to do that. Uh, we can then do a identifier, which is gonna be a json.stringify. We pass in some braces, which we then need to close. And inside of these braces, we need to pass in an ID. In this case, I'll just pass in the number one and we need to pass in which channel we're subscribing to. And remember inside of our alerts channel.rb, we had that stream from the alerts channel. So we come in here and we just paste that in exactly as it's spelled and then we're good to go. And this actually doesn't need to be a semicolon right there. Once that's done, we can come down here and we can do a socket.send and we do a json.stringify for the message. At this point, this will be sent over and then we're good to go. Now there's a couple other things we can do and I'll just grab these real quick. 
We can come down here below the socket on open and we can say, well, what if we want to have an on message? We can also have a on close and we can have a on error. And this one's really key because it'll tell you all the time when something breaks for absolutely seemingly no reason. So inside of here, we can just say the WebSocket error was observed and this is the error right here. We'll add in a space just to keep it a bit cleaner. Inside of our on close, we just wanna say that we disconnected from the server. And then inside of our on message is where we can do some magic. Basically, we're gonna get some data from the server and for now we'll leave it with just a event.data and you'll see what we can do with this. The last thing we wanna do here is we wanna grab this create socket, come down to the bottom and just paste it in. We can control S that, come over here and refresh. Oh, and we're already getting some data from the server. So we can see here, we're connected to the server. We received some data from the server of type welcome. We received some data from the server with an identifier, an ID, a channel, which is the alerts channel and a, a confirmed subscription. So that's like our ACK and our NAC. We sent a message to them. They sent a message back saying, yep, you're good to go. And now we're gonna receive pings, which are gonna happen periodically. They're kind of a pain. You'll see it's like every three seconds, I guess. Uh, and then over here on the Rails app, we're just uh, streaming the, the, the channels as expected, but nothing's really happening here. If I click say hello, nothing will happen. So what we can do is we can come into our Rails app inside of the uh, pages controller. We have that hello action, which we're calling with our button. And whenever we click this button, we wanna broadcast something to our client app here so it can see it. What we can do is inside of this uh, hello method, we can do a action cable dot server dot broadcast, which might look uh, familiar if you've used like turbo before, because we had the turbo stream dot append. We also had the like uh, broadcast to turbo stream stuff that we did, right? So it's a similar concept, but here we're just broadcasting to the alerts channel name again. And what we can pass in is just some, some text. So we can say, hello uh, from Rails. Save that. And we don't need to redirect here. We should be good to go. We can come over to our Rails app, refresh. And then if we hit say hello, you can see in here that uh, hopefully uh, transmitting hello from Rails via streamed from alerts channel. We can come over to this application here and we don't, oops, let me actually refresh this. We can come over to this application, say hello a couple times. And here we can see that we received data from server with an identifier and a message that says hello from Rails. So we are receiving the message, we just need to parse it a bit better and maybe stop the pings from bothering us. So let's come over to the main.js file inside of our Vite application again. And in here, we'll just clean this up real quick so that we can finish up the video. Basically inside of the on message, instead of just console logging the event data, what we can do is we can comment that out. And we can say, if the data.type is equal to the string of ping, just return. This will stop it from spamming us all of the time. The only thing we have to do is actually create a const data equals. And here we wanna do a json.parse on the event.data. So by doing this, we'll no longer have the issue of it console logging all of that noise. We can then come down here and we can say, if the data.message exists, we then want to console.log the data.message. Now, if we come over here, we're not gonna get those pings all the time anymore. And if we come over to the Rails app, we can say hello, say hello, say hello, come over here. And we're now saying hello from the Rails application to the Vite application whenever we want to. So in theory, you could have a whole bunch of stuff on your Rails application uh, inside of your controllers. And every time you do anything, you can just broadcast what you did to the Vite uh, server. So maybe we stop the Rails app, we do a Rails G controller, or maybe we do a Rails G scaffold post, give each post a title and a body of type text, do a Rails DB colon migrate, and then we can do a Rails S. We can then come into our Rails app, go to slash posts, and then inside of our post controller, let's just grab this method right here. Inside of our post controller, for example, maybe every time we create a post and we have it save, we then do a action cable broadcast to the um, alerts channel. So maybe instead of broadcasting hello from Rails, we broadcast something like uh, created a new post with a title of whatever right here. We'll save this. Let's 
exit out of here, refresh the page, do new test and case, or we'll say test post with broadcast. We'll hit create post. Actually, let me come over here and refresh first because yep, we're disconnected. We'll hit create post, come over here and we can see we created a new post with title test post with broadcast. So that's sort of how you can hook this up to, to you know, broadcast anything you want to uh, within reason to your front end server and it'll be updated in real time without having to do any sort of polling. So hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was a cool uh, Saturday bonus video um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.